Hello everyone and welcome to Weekend Workshops presented by the Wichita Falls Museum of Art at MSU Texas. In the tradition of makerspaces, we are here to learn the basics of a new medium and make it your own. Today, we will be focused on India ink. So India ink, um, just inks in general, are a very old art making medium. They date back thousands of years and that's probably due to how simple they are to make really. Inks are a combination of soot with water, and sometimes there's also additional binding agents added, like a um, little bit of glue or gum arabic. Ink can take the form of liquid ink, like we're going to be using today. Um, in the past and now, it's also been made as sticks, where the ink has been poured into a mold, allowed to dry, and then in order to use it, you then grind it on a stone and then add water, and then that's how you can use it again. But like I said, today we are going to be focused on the use of the liquid form of ink. Out in front of me today, you see a lot of different materials. We're just working on watercolor paper today. Um, working with ink is very similar to working with watercolors, and sometimes you need paper that's a little heavier so it can actually absorb the water so it doesn't become too warped and too twisted or, you know, mangled on us. We have a couple of cups of water. Um, we have a few different kinds of ink that we'll be using today. Ink um, generally comes in black. That is the most common color that you can find it. And then by watering it down, you can create a gradient of light to dark. Um, ink also does come in different colors. We aren't going to be using the different colors today, but I did want to make you aware that it does come in different colors. So if you enjoy working with it, you have lots and lots of different options. Okay, so I think when most people think of ink, they probably think of pens, um, like dip pens, nib pens. In the past, um, sticks have been used, needles have been used, really anything that can be dipped into ink and then transferred onto paper. Okay, and in this way, full drawings can be made. Um, and that's actually one really nice thing about this ink is if you are if you love working with watercolor, what a lot of um, watercolor artists love to do is they love to make an initial drawing out of India ink because one remarkable thing about this material is once it is dry, it is waterproof, meaning you could do a full drawing in India ink, allow it to dry, and then you can completely go over it with watercolor or other water-based art-making media and it won't be disturbed. It will stay exactly how it is. But if you wanted to use a brush, that is also possible. Um, historically, um, horsehair brushes have been used. Today, we're just going to be using watercolor brushes. All sorts of things will work. It, it's up to you as far as preference goes. And same with the pen. You could go directly in to the ink and then transfer it to paper. Okay. And I earlier I had mentioned that this works very similarly to watercolor. And what I mean by that is when it comes to brushwork and wet on wet work. So if we get some water on our brush, we can draw a form. And then from here, we can introduce ink to this form. One thing that I really love about India inks is how dramatic this blooming effect can be. You'll notice when I hit it, that ink just started to spread immediately across the surface. I've found that compared to watercolors, India ink allows for very, very dramatic blooming effects. And depending on what kind of ink you're working with, 
you can also get pretty remarkable granulation that gives texture and all sorts of visual interest. Now, the reason why I say depending on what kind of ink you use, there are different kinds of India ink out there, and they will respond in very different ways to this wet technique where you introduce ink to a wet surface and allow it to bloom across the area. So if you do find that you really like working with this material, try all of the different kinds of ink that you can get your hands on um, because they really do all react differently. And the amount of granulation that's going to occur really is dependent on how fine was the pigment, like the soot that's in the ink, when it was made. The finer the soot, the softer you are going to be able to get. And the more coarse, the more dramatic of this kind of effect that you're going to be able to get. Okay. So earlier I had mentioned that it's possible to get a gradient um, moving from light to dark just from using one color of ink. So the easiest way I've found to do this is to pick up a palette kind of like this. And I've filled each one of these uh, areas with a little bit of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some ink on my brush and I'm just going to go boop, 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 boop all the way around. And what's going to happen is the first one where I put that ink in is going to be the darkest. And as I keep moving, it's going to lose ink as it goes and become lighter and lighter. Okay, so you can kind of already see that happening. And if we go in and mix them, so I'm just mixing the first one that I did and the last one that I did. Ah, we'll go in and we will do the rest and I'll do a quick gradient on the paper for you. And there are a few spots that aren't perfect, but in general, I have, there's my lightest. There's a little bit darker, a little darker still. And by the time we end up back at our original color, you can see that we end up with light to dark in a very gradual pathway. This can be really helpful if you are trying to get a wide range of tones out of your color. Earlier I had mentioned that due to the waterproof nature of this ink when it dries, it allows you to then place media like watercolor over top of that. So I wanted to show you what that looks like. Move this out of the way. If I was going to be doing extensive um, painting on this, outside of just doing a demonstration, I would tape this piece down to a board with masking tape just like I, but just like I did with our sample piece. Just to reduce warping. Okay, so I'm going to get some water. I'll pick up some paint. And you'll notice as I start to paint on the surface, this ink wash painting won't be disturbed at all. You could go in as heavy as you want with water. You could scrub with your brush pretty vigorously, and that ink is not going anywhere. So these are just some very, very basic techniques that go into working with ink. Dive right into it. If you enjoy drawing, then maybe pick up a nib pen and give that a try. You'll find you have so much more control with your drawing using a nib pen compared to improvised tools like I use today. If you enjoy watercolor painting, but you want something that's very vivid and has dramatic blooming effects, 
maybe give ink a try. Um, I know I really love to go in with ink wash paintings or drawings before I do anything else and then just see how it reacts and then work on top of it. I hope that this video has gotten you excited to try India Ink and I hope that it was helpful to providing a few tips into how it might work. And I really hope that you give it a try. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we will see you next time.